Uh, but hey, it's good to uh, see everybody today. Welcome to a very special uh, online meetup. We're so excited to do this with you all today. Excited to be on this call. Um, obviously, this is a very timely uh, call for many of us due to the response we had. Um, obviously, many of you have a lot of questions that we could be helpful with and talk through today. So I want to welcome you. And um, Pastor Jody, will you give us just a quick word of prayer before we get going here today? Would you mind just praying over everybody? Absolutely. God, thank you so much for um, being with us. We, we welcome, we acknowledge your presence with us. And even through a tough time, a difficult season, God, we know and we believe that you aren't surprised by any of this, that you're already ready. You have positioned so many people um, to be ready for this situation. And God, I just pray that together as the local church with a capital C, we can come together, we can unified in the, be unified in this season to impact more people than ever, that the kingdom of God can be like yeast, that it can just spread through our communities, our cities, and more people will come to know you through this season than ever before. Lead us, guide us, give us wisdom, give us peace, give us the words to say in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement, say amen. 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 I could just hear them all right now. They said amen. Okay, so a couple of ground rules for what we're going to do today. Um, first of all, we, we chose to do this webinar style due to the response. And so you can see four of us, but there is over a hundred of you on the call right now. So welcome. This is, we have pastors joining us from all across the U.S., all across Canada. Um, I didn't check everyone's location, but, but um, and we're just so glad to be talking to the Big C Church. Um, we are going to be recording today's call, and it will start in just a minute. Uh, for use on the Open Network. We just recently announced a partnership between Team Church and Open Network. And today's call is actually going to go on the Open Network as a resource that they're going to use to help pastors during this virus uh, crisis season that we're in. And so this will be recorded, but we do want you to engage. And so at the bottom of uh, the Zoom app or screen, however you're logged in today, you'll see a Q&A feature. I want to ask you to use that today. Ask your questions there. We came preloaded with a bunch of notes to talk about today, but use the Q&A feature. And um, if we don't get a chance to answer it live, I've asked several people to be um, offering thoughts um, right on the app here on, on text. And so they'll be responding to you uh, hopefully in real time. So just excited to make this a really uh, helpful time. And so, anyways, welcome. Uh, welcome to Team Church Online uh, Meetup. I want to introduce, first of all, for those of you who I can't assume everybody knows everybody, uh, my pastor, Pastor Kevin Gerald. Uh, why don't you say hello to everybody today, PK? Hello, everyone. So glad that you are a part of today. And uh, there's such interest in this. And I don't know if we've ever had uh, such a... Uh, you know, so being on the same page, in other words, immediately without announcement. So we normally have a conference we all show up to, or we have an event that we all plan around, but this is unplanned, uh, and here we are, and so uh, I'm ready to get into some stuff today and share and talk and hopefully help one another. I'm also joined by uh, Pastor Jody Cameron, uh, my good friend. I make her do all the teen church stuff, so she's going to be here and help me pull some gold out of Pastor Kevin. My wife, Lindsay, is on here. Say hey to everybody, Lindsay. I guess you don't have to say hey, but she's there, and it's going to help um, moderate some questions and ask some questions and whatnot. Um, teen church exists to equip the teams that build the church that impact communities for Christ. And so if you're new to the team church family, welcome. Uh, we have nothing to join. We have no network for you, no network papers for you to sign. If you're here today, as far as we're concerned, we're, you're in. So welcome to the tribe. And uh, we just want to be a resource to you and help to you in this season. So um, Pastor Kevin, we're just going to dive into uh, some important conversations. Of course, Seattle um, has been kind of considered the epicenter or one of the epicenters of the virus outbreak in North America. So whether we liked it or not, we have kind of found ourselves leading church in a, in a climate that's been making some of the first, you know, closures and declarations and whatnot. 
So why don't you just get us started today talking to us about where your mind has been as you've been hearing um, of closures, as you've been hearing our, our governor and whatnot, and as future announcements are made, because no doubt this thing is changing every day, if not every hour right now, where should a pastor's mind be right now as, we're, as this thing is unfolding so fluidly? Sure. Uh, what I've what I would just share with everybody is that we were the first um, state, and so I was pretty caught off guard, honestly, and had not prepared uh, for the announcement that hit us having to do with the shutdown that we had and the limitations that were placed on us, the ban, if you would, from our our uh, attorney. My first reaction was defensive. You can't do this to us. We're a church. <laughs> I went through all of that sort of uh, emotion. And then, you know, I was getting texts and notices from friends and their sympathy around the country. And uh, maybe this really sounds bad, but I felt, I felt pretty alone with local pastors, basically. And then the next day or two, it all started happening. And from one state to the next, to the next, to the next. And quickly, we were all in the same position. So... I started, uh, I guess, in my mind, asking myself, what is it that I want us to be known for? What is it that I want to represent? What is the kind of uh, opportunity presented by some of this problem that we're in right now? And so I immediately not just started with, I didn't just start with the logistics of where we're going to have church or what we're going to do with church and how we're going to do that. But also the narrative in my head, I just started trying to think about leading a narrative, a different narrative than we were hearing, you know, on the, on the uh, news and so forth and thinking about how different that narrative was from the one that was, uh, is our narrative as the church. And so that's kind of where I started, I guess, is just in that process. And that's what took us into the weekend um, was that that element of leading the narrative? I can't hear Brian. Sorry, user error. Um, PK, why don't you take us through for just a couple minutes here to get us started? I thought you did such a good job. Uh, you actually did it with our legacy givers uh, the other night. We had a pre-planned uh, retreat, and then over the weekend in church, you led our church through three very distinct points. And I think I wanted um, everyone to hear this today, just to kind of hear your, your tenor and your tone as to what we said to our church uh, over the weekend. The first thing you said was, let's not shrink back in fear. Let's step forward in faith. Uh, would you want to expand on that at all? Yeah, I mean, I think it's self-explanatory, uh, uh, mostly to pastors that are out there, but uh, I do think that the posture is so important, and I do think that even if people assume or you assume that people are going to hear want to uh, going to hear you say something about faith, I think it's important to say it. So I think we got to get out there and, and let that be the first thing that we say, a rally cry is to remind people that this is not a time for us to shrink back in fear. It's a time for us to move forward in faith. So that was my first call uh, to our church. And the narrative that I wanted to present was we're going forward. We're known for that, you know, move life forward is, is our, um, is kind of our uh, mantra. It's what we say all the time anyway. And this was just an opportunity of season to say, Hey, we're doing that. Um, we're moving forward in faith. And then after that, I talked about recognizing the difference between a few facts and the whole truth. And I wanted to lean into the idea that what you hear heard is not the whole truth, um, especially those of you who are dealing with fear right now, that there's another, there are other truths that are out there that are balancing truths, not just the word of God, but even the facts that we had. So I showed you know, I showed some pictures and graphs and things having to do with how many people, um, you know, actually have had the virus versus the 3% around the world that have actually died 
from having the virus. And so those are third world countries. Those are countries that don't have nearly what we have in America. I just really spoke to that uh, element and, and tried to educate people that maybe had not been educated in the more positive information that's available to us. And then thirdly, I talked about the isolation not being uh, really the right frame of mind right now. Let's not isolate, let's participate. And out of that, I was wanting to make uh, people in our church, I wanted to prepare our church for the fact that we were going to communicate more than ever right now. The way we communicate is changing, but we're going to commu- we're going to raise our voice um, rather than isolating ourselves. I wanted them to get a picture of, hey, game on in a new way. Like we're, we're still the church and we're going to ra- rally behind uh, – the idea that we are light and we are salt, but it's going to it's going to look different, of course. So out of that, I went into explanations of how we were going to communicate and what we our plans are, are in terms of the future. And I think it's important to note too that we took an entire weekend to do that. And I don't know what everyone's instinct would be, Pastor Kevin. You know, in times like this, you know, some would maybe over address it, someone maybe under address it. I mean, you, you chose to give an entire weekend to it just to go straight at it. You felt it was that important. Yeah. Yes. I, I think if you're not, if, you know, a lot of guys that would just uh, tend to assume that, well, hey, this big ministry, they just had church, you know, um, might fail to recognize the fact that in a really big uh, ministry that has already uh, created the lines of communication with with online church in a in a really good way with um, with watch parties and small groups and now all that churches that have that already in place probably would be different than most of the people that are at grassroots level and I would even say for us. We, we have online and have had for a long time, but I don't feel like and didn't feel like that we fell into the category of someone who could not seize the opportunity in front of us to actually lay out logistics and to point people forward in this is what we're going to do in this season. So that's why I did it. And I would recommend everybody, I think 99.5% of the pastors and the churches my recommendation is to lean into that very practical, here's what we're going to do um, moving forward. Okay, so to give everybody a roadmap of where this conversation is going to go, um, I'm going to ask Pastor Kevin about three things. And then um, I'm seeing your questions come in on Q&A. Please uh, keep leaving those, uh, and we will get to as many of them as we can. Um, but I'm going to talk to Pastor Kevin about staff reassignment and how we're approaching that. I'm going to uh, talk to him about leading the different people groups of our church during this season, and we're going to talk about the weekend experience as we see it right now. So that'll be our roadmap, then we'll get to some questions, so please use the Q&A. Um, you can also vote, by the way, on which question you like better, so let us know which ones matter to you. Um, So, Pastor Kevin, let's talk about staff reassignment. Uh, You and uh, Pastor Sheila have been busy all weekend working on a new structure and organization with the staff. In fact, we just got out of a meeting, a couple hour meeting this morning, where um, a lot of people's jobs got reinvented uh, on the fly this morning. So you're you're going right at this with with, uh, reorganizing the staff. Why don't you, I guess... um, take off on that for a minute. Why, why should we be going straight at this with the organization of our team? Well, I, I think to get to the bottom line before I elaborate uh, on some of the specifics, just to get to the big uh, opportunity that we have is that I would suggest that everyone think and realize that your church is now best approached in two ways. And that would be by small group, whatever that would look like in terms of digital meetups and so forth. But your, your church is now being approached with small groups and with a weekend experience that is an online or digital experience. 
So that's the two things standing side by side that your church now is doing. So you have a lot of staff members, for example, if you, if you do have, and you have people working for you, if you just ask yourself, what are they going to do? Like, what do they do? Their jobs are, many of their jobs are so different or non-existent at this point. And that was what we started doing. We, we started realizing that there's a lot of people who we're paying and are on our payroll who are suddenly in a position where they don't have anything to do. They show up on Monday, Tuesday, don't have anything to do. But when you start looking at connectivity and how can we connect to our church quickly and then be able to create a whole different approach to how we do church, you do need some of those people and you just need them to, to work in a different way. And you need to give them the direction to work in a different way. So we just called it staff reassignment. And we started looking at the people that work for us and have a paycheck and laying that next to the two areas where we're, we're really going to focus. And that is uh, meetups for people, small group interaction, done mainly digital, um, but also knowing that people are still going to get together in small groups um, at homes and other places and so forth. We created this, this approach at a much higher level than we've ever done it before. And then we are assigning our staff to all of the details around that and how to do it efficiently, effectively, how to lead into it, promote it, market it, as well as follow up with, with it, people in attendance and so forth. And so the weekend experience, much the same way with our watch parties, et cetera, um, reassigning our staff. I'll give you one example. Our, we, don't, we didn't have anyone who actually was pioneering for us and leading the way of helping set up watch parties that people would begin to want to have as a result of our online location. We just sort of approached it with, you know, this one and that one would make contact and people that worked on our staff, even had one of our guys who, who works a couple of weeks ago, he works in our IT department, who said, hey, I'd like to go to that area. We've got someone requesting direction on, on having a watch party. So we were setting him up to go over there and sort of guide that. In other words, I had no one officially doing that. Um, but then yesterday during church, we had just from one person who has a network of 300 people that they invited to our online service. They had 80 people from their online network of approximately 300 people. I'm sure most, if any, most of those, probably none of those actually attend Champion Center. And out of that came some watch party requests, people that loved and thanked her for inviting them to our, our weekend experience. And then there were requests, hey, how do we start our own watch party? So one of the things I've done is reassign a staff member to that specific role of you're going to be on the watch party lead team and you're gonna head over, make contact with those people and uh, began the process of training and developing them, preparing them this weekend to host their own watch party. So I'm just giving you an example of how the work that, you know, the outworking of what we're doing uh, can actually be assigned to your paid staff. Um, talking about staff reassignments, one of the things that was brought up uh, in a question here, as well as what we talked about in our um, staff meeting today was what we're doing to help the community. So. Um, through, Champions, through Champions Foundation and Champion Center, those are kind of our, our two pathways here um, through Champion Center that we reach out to our communities. But what, what did you share, uh, maybe just spend a moment and share what you um, communicated to our staff this morning as far as um, what this can look like, reaching out to the community where it's not just the foundation team by itself anymore, you know, not that it ever is really, but you know, how we're kind of spreading it into the whole staff. Yeah, I, I, Jody, I, what I did is I told everyone that basically our foundation that is 
Um, actually, we have one paid person leading our foundation, for example, and it works through volunteers. And what I told the rest of the staff today is that you're, we are all now a part of the foundation team. And many of you will be shoulder tapped specifically to help from campus to campus and make sure that we have strength at every location to be able to be a part of the foundation's efforts of helping people in our church family and in our community. So a lot of people who would normally, again, say, well, you know, that's the foundation team. I was breaking down walls today that normally people function in their role and consider it their role only and the other is somebody else's role. I started breaking that down today and emphasizing to them how important it is for all of us to be a part of different, and, and we did it in a more organized way. I'm trying to um, not get too specific here. I think everybody can get an idea here, the general approach. But for example, our foundation is, is actually everyone's concern as well. We're all part of that, especially those who will specifically from location to location be brought in. Now they're staff members, but they're actually a part of a team they weren't a part of until today. Awesome. Um, PK, why don't you move us on to the next section? And, and we have a lot of great questions coming in. And thank you for these. So we're going to keep weaving them in and get to just a rapid fire Q&A here in a minute. Yeah. Um, will you talk to us about leading the people groups of our church? Uh, just a little bit more. I love how you identified them and maybe everyone would identify them differently. But I love how you identified them. You organized our staff around them. I'd love for the pastors to hear what you're calling our staff to do specifically with those people groups, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, I am. I'm right now. Ryan, would you get that list for me of the people, the meetings that we had just now? I'll name them all off. But basically what I did is I took the people groups and I started with, for example, attenders and I labeled, I labeled a group of a, that is the attenders to our church on our database. And then I went down to the next group and I called it, you know, just our giving, our giving units of our church. And I, sorry, I'm getting, I'm pulling up my notes here. We had so many notes. I didn't know we had all this. Okay, so uh, I might actually need. So, so the next one is. Uh, sorry, we have a the givers group. We have the attenders group. We have the legacy team group, which is our top giver group. We have a lead X, which is our intern team. We have the youth group. We have the women's group, we have the men's group, and we have then, aside from all these groups, we have the watch parties, which is the weekend group oversight. And that's how, we, is that what you're asking me, how we broke it down to just share some of that? Uh, yeah, and I think you, you, you know, even called, for example, you called for the youth team to engage like far more than normal texting you know this morning we talked about different zoom meetups you know that kind of thing yeah so what we did is i took all of these groups and we went to a digital format with all of them and i assigned a specific lead person if there wasn't one over this action that we're going to take so this week is a for some of those groups, it's a training week. It's a time for the women, for example, and the leader getting together with all of her women to plan uh, for next week a startup on the curriculum they're going to use on a weekly basis to have their digital meetings. Um, I ask our children's leaders to plan a 
an opportunity for all parents to join them on a Facebook meeting that they would host. So our children's leaders will gather together, put the word out, and uh, promote it, market it, and then they will have a meetup for all parents first, where they will, first of all, they will engage the parents with how to parent your children through this season, this time, just again, back to some narrative, leading the narrative. And then secondly, to tell our parents how about the curriculum that's already there. We started it last weekend for children online. And then that we are with them, helping them. We will walk alongside them. We take the hand of the parent to every week engage you as parents as well as your children. We're providing for your children and for you uh, you're, as a leader of our church. So that's an example, I guess, of how we did it, but we broke it into the about six or seven groups. Didn't want to get it too wide. And with that groups, we, you know, we created direction for each group. And so I think what I am hoping everyone's hearing from that point is that maybe, maybe your church would be broken up differently, and that's great. Um, but just the intentionality of, of communicating to specific groups, organizing staff around that, and, and spelling out to staff what a higher level of engagement looks like. This, in other words, this isn't, if this goes on for weeks, this is not you know, time off. For us, actually, you you said the opposite today to P, you know, PK. You said to our staff, "This will probably be one of your busier seasons in the life of our church." I mean, for example, um, this is a great time, like for maybe some of your worship team needs vocal lessons. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe some people on your worship team, um, you know, could could get you know, music lessons, get to just ways to prepare even now, not just for what's going on now, but for when we come back. So we're, you know, we're preparing even facility wise as well for the comeback for the day we all have our grand opening and we're joined back together again and we're all returning. What is it that we normally have set aside that we maybe don't even have time to do in our minds, that in this season, with a redistribution, reallocating of responsibilities, we can actually prepare not only equipping people in the present and being there for our congregation, but also prepare for the, for the return back to our physical locations. Awesome. I'd love to get to one more topic, and then we're going to open up for questions, which, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about money first because y'all are flooding our Q&A with questions on finances. So we will absolutely get there first. I think Jody has a few of those uh, teed up. Uh, but Pastor Kevin, talk to us real quick about how you are approaching right now the weekend experience. Um, obviously, most or all of us are now on an online, you know, you know the, the, the gatherings, you know, thing are now banned at 50 nationally, or it looks like. And so talk to us about that. Also, talk to us about the fact on not overreacting. I mean, we can only operate off of the information we have right now in terms of bans and whatnot. Yeah. Um, first of all, I would just encourage, there's a lot going around. And I know that there's a potential for lockdown, shutdown at any moment. We hear those rumors. Um, I was reaching out to some friends this morning around the country who have connection with, uh, with the White House and as well as trying to get to our state represent, representatives ahead of maybe the game. Because here's my thought, uh, is that my attorney has said to, to me that technically we don't fall under the public gathering uh, and so a martial law might uh, trump everything else that we trump president trump it might might go above everything else that we would that we would do but um, as of now i'm trying to just operate in what i do know and i'm trying to stick with what we're sure of and that is that we can have our weekend services 
And, and I'll tell you my response if we can't, but uh, I think just stay in that vein and consider yourself able to go to a studio or go to your church, record your services, do it as well as you can. You can probably do it with just a small group of people and do it efficiently, effectively, like most of us did this, this weekend. But that's, that's my direction right now on that. And don't think about yet what's, what, what we don't have to deal with. Um, that, that we'll deal with when we come. Now, this is my thought on that, is that I feel like uh, not only do we have our legal rights as a religious organization, but if you stop and consider the people that are going to have to remain mobile are people like the health industry and also our media industry. Uh, the people that bring you the news, they're going to be driving to their stations and they're going to be uh, able to get behind the TV camera. And so the conversation I'm having with our legal advisors right now and some friends as well around the country is, um, yes, we have our religious freedom, and we want to, but we want to cooperate with our, our community. But is it possible that we would fall into one of those categories or actually both of those categories? And is it possible that as people of faith or faith leaders, that we can find a way to get to our location and communicate with our church family and continue that and, and to bring hope to them and so forth. So I'm kind of fighting from that stance right now. I'm fighting from that position right now. And I don't plan to stop doing that um, right now. And I, I, don't, I don't know what that means completely, but uh, I'm ready even if you know, if there's that kind of thing that comes down that says, let's quarantine for the next 14 days, I'm actually not thinking that I would, I would fall into the category of actually doing that right now. Um, so I could be wrong on that. I don't want to say I know completely the future uh, or what we're going to deal with, but, but just so you know that I'm, I'm thinking I'll be able to continue to do that. Um, one more question, or I'm sorry, one more thing I wanted to say before we open up for some questions here. Um, I want to let you all know, in case you hadn't seen on our email that went out this week, and we'll post some more information on Instagram here shortly today. Um, we have decided to do four more meetups this week for your team, for different members of your team. Uh, if you are interested in, um, in sending them to these meetups, uh, we have two meetups uh, coming up tomorrow, actually, at this time, addressing online campus or online streaming, both from a, like, I don't know what the heck we're doing standpoint to how to elevate it and make it stronger. We also have a meetup coming up later this week on online giving as well as children's ministry. So if that would help your team, um, we're just going to gather uh, some people on some calls to discuss and answer questions just like this format. If you aren't getting our emails, please feel free to leave your email in. Uh, let's use the chat feature for that. Um, it, or if there's someone you want to get it, we'll also make sure you you get sent that by, you know, because you RSVP'd for today. Uh, so that being said, Pastor Jody, why don't you maybe take us through some of these finance questions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one, uh, you know, it's kind of a multi-pronged question here for finances, but let's just start with budgets. Um, what are some things that leaders, pastors, churches can do in this season uh, just to, you know, consider budgeting differently during this season? Um, you know, March is generally a high nonprofit charitable giving time, um, and this might might stop that or it might not. So what are some things that, that church leaders can do uh, to budget differently in this time to really be wise? It's a great question. I, I think all of us basically know the principle of, of making uh, cuts and fitting within our budget. The mindset that I would want to say is that way back in like 2008, 2009, whenever the economy was hit bad, we made a lot of cuts. And there was one point even in, in all of that recovery mode where we took a million dollars a year out of our budget so I think having the courage to move quickly is really important. 
at the same time, I would say uh, we don't want to overreact. Like I men mentioned a while ago, what you don't know yet, I would just relax a little bit and stay within uh, what you do know. What you do know probably is what came in this weekend, for example, in your income. You don't know about next weekend. So be careful not to speculate too much. Stay in the present when you're thinking about your budget. Stay in the present. And also, here's how I'm feeling about this past weekend and our online giving, just FYI, is that I feel like one week, it, it takes one week for people to actually who – are not giving online regularly for them to figure out, okay, what do I do? Do I take an envelope to the church? Do I drive there? Do I, can somebody help me get, you know, uh, set on online giving? Because maybe it's a, it's a 50 year old, 60 year old guy who's never, he doesn't know much about giving online and how to set that up with push pay, et cetera. So just, just relax a little bit, I would say, because, this week is not symbolic of what will be completely. I think it's possible that some people are just unprepared in their giving. Um, and I would wait, I would hold off. And, but then on the other hand, start thinking of a lower income than you have had for sure. And consider how you'll approach those, uh, those budget uh, maneuvers and the, the budget shifts that you're gonna have how will you approach it? Where will you start? What will you do so that you can move quickly when that time comes? Um, that's a great, great response. Thank you. Um, there's another side of this money conversation is giving. Um, so how, what are some ways that, uh, you know, people, leaders, church leaders out there might be wondering, A, how do I get people to give online? Uh, you mentioned PushPay. There, there's several different platforms that people can use. PushPay just happens to be what, what we've used uh, the last few years. But how do we get people to give online? Um, and, and how do we talk about giving in this season? So, you know, how much do we talk about money? Uh, there, there's been you know, a couple of like domino effect tragedies uh, in different parts of the country. If we think of Tennessee was, was brought up on the chat, you know, they had tornadoes uh, that devastated some areas and now they've got this coronavirus. So the churches there might be feeling it even more than uh, churches in other places. So how do we get people to, to give online or, or to continue giving, even if it's dropping an envelope off at the church, right? Uh, they got their checkbook ready. Uh, or how do we talk about giving uh, in a sensitive way, but still being strong? So what I'm doing right now is that I am, as you heard me say earlier, I'm separating our church into groups of focus, like their focus groups is one thing you can call them. These are focus groups so that for example, I want to have all of our tenders and, and I want to know and have that, that purged on our database, our current attenders um, that we know of in one, I want that in one uh, database separation. I want another category to be all of our current giving units so that I can speak to all current giving units. And then I want our third one is our legacy group, which is our higher uh, level, our higher capacity givers. Now, the reason I've chosen that is because I want to personally be able to pinpoint specific communication that may not be appropriate for all to hear, but, but would be appropriate for another to hear. And so when you talk about what is the appropriate way to communicate, one way is to uh, gather stories right now. We had a lot of feedback from people thanking us for being online this week and uh, thanking us for actually being present. We had people saying, wow, I was feeling so down and discouraged and all the scary information, but after the service, I just feel full of faith. So that story is a story to be shared with your givers. That's a story to be shared with your church. That's a story to be shared, especially with your legacy group. Um, you may tailor it differently on delivery. I might go with a legacy group and I may say, hey guys, you know what it's like. You own businesses and we're praying for you right now. 
and what you're going through and we want to support you. And in fact, we're going to start some meetups um, this next week with all of our legacy team so that we can serve you and help you as you navigate uh, in, in your own way through the coronavirus challenge that we have. Um, also be mindful, uh, our church really right now needs your help. We need you more than ever. And those of you that can continue to, not only to give, but give more during this season, just know that we're continuing to reach out, help people. Here's a testimony. Here's a story I wanted to share with you today. So that's one example, but but point I think is if you tailor your communication differently for the different groups, you'll come out of the gate stronger with those with the individuals rather than agonizing over, wow, how do I if I say that, then you know the 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 people that don't get it, <laughs> that's a little too heavy for them. If you could separate your communication approach a little different, I think you'll you'll be a step ahead. The, uh, the, the, last, uh, the last question on money that, that I'll bring to the table is we've had a, a few people that have said they're, they're in building programs or they had their, you know, big um, once a year offering coming up in the next, you know, few weeks or next couple months. Uh, what are, what are just, you know, you've talked, I know you've talked to some of our, even our team church contributors uh, who are in the same position and, and you've been getting feedback. So uh, maybe just give some some thoughts or some wisdom on how you would process it um, if that was what, you know, the, your situation that you were in. Sure. Um, I would, Brandon, I'm asking you, I guess, uh, when I'm done commenting on this, would you inform everyone uh, and just reiterate that this meetup is not just about what I'm saying, but we'd like to encourage them to talk with one another and engage one another because people who are in, for example, you've got a big offering uh, weekend coming up, talking to one another could be very helpful. And same with building programs, et cetera. Um, so I hope that'll happen. And, and I hope just there'll be a natural opportunity for, for some of you who are on the exact same page in the same scenario to talk it out together. As far as what I'm feeling, what I've shared with some of um, the guys that I've talked to is if you can put off the, the giving date, uh, I would recommend you do that. Like if even if this coming weekend were your offering date, I would uh, certainly not refuse offerings that people want to bring and give to the digital platform. But I would also get ahead of it and say we're going to we're we're, we're go going to have this big date when we are back together again, and just begin to notify people that there will be one coming, so that maybe you have two opportunities actually um, before it's all over. But I wouldn't hesitate if I were you to postpone um, that big giving opportunity. If you're in a building program right now, the good news could be that the, uh, uh, th that the interest rate is dropping <laughs> even as we speak. And, and so while maybe there'll be some money challenges on one side, let's believe for some blessings on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to call an audible here, and can one of our uh, directional team guys, will you maybe start a question that other people could respond to? If you're in a building project or you're, you have a big, big offering coming up in some way, and you would maybe like to talk a little more in depth after this, why don't you, you know, leave us your you, you know, your name or email or put your hand up or something, just let us know. And let's see if we can maybe organize another conversation just about that, how to best approach that. We, I think on our lead team, just for team church, we have two or three that are either in building projects right now or have big offerings coming up. So we'd be happy to continue some conversations on that. So uh, PK, I am going to throw you a real time update only because my phone is absolutely blowing up right now with text messages on this. Uh, President Trump is right now holding a press conference as we speak, and he has just mentioned uh, a called for a ban, I'm assuming it's nationally, uh, of gatherings of 10 or more nationally. So I'm, you're, you may not have seen it. This may be the first you're hearing about it. Sorry. But this is like this is going on literally simultaneously as we're having this call. So you know, maybe just talk us through this is 10 or more, if that's our reality, you know. Um, okay, yeah. What would you do? 
It's interesting because I actually said to our team today, the number 12. So getting us down to 10 would not be hard. Um, I said that's the ideal group in the digital formats that we're going to be giving to and assignments to, you know, the women's groups and the men's groups. For example, our men are just getting ready to start the book by uh, Craig Groeschel and the name of that men's study fight. 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 Yeah, fight. How timely is that? Um, but our men are getting ready to start that, for example, and they're going to look at it being in groups of 10 or less. And many of the men that join will join individually. It'll probably be a format similar to what we're doing right now, um, where there'll be a few of our leader, men leaders, lo location pastors will be, faces will be visible, and others will be joining like much of our audience today. But point is, is that you can actually do some great things with 10 or less. So I would just encourage you um, to not be, and you know what, if 10 is what we have, uh, we can do that and do a great weekend service program with 10 people. So I'm, if, if that's what we end up getting, um, I'm not telling you how many I'll actually maybe attempt to have, but, <laughs> but I'm not going to do any big meetings. I'm going to do my best to, to work within what we have and to cooperate as much as I can. Um, but, you know, I, I actually that would be welcome news versus this other idea of what we've been hearing around our state um, that could maybe still be a reality is that people will be asked to actually stay indoors, everyone, no one leaving um, for the next 14 days. But that, that's my response to that is that I, I just think um, even the 10 day, if we're thinking about that and that was announced by President Trump, then let's go for it. We can do good stuff within that. Yeah, and um, I'm reading, everyone needs to do their own research on this, obviously. I'm reading, it's, uh, I'm getting mixed reports if it's a suggestion or a ban, but either way, I think it's okay. wise to just, um, you know, do your research and lean into that. Uh, Jody. One, one thing that we talked about in our staff that might free some pastors who are, are, are watching today, and again, like, like Pastor Kevin said, you know, this is really just to get a conversation started. Hopefully you can find each other in the chat, start conversations, you know, ex exchange information just to keep this conversation going. We don't know everything. We're just trying to share what we do know today and hopefully help um, however we can. But one thing that we shared with our staff today was we're going to spend our time and, and energy promoting the digital meetups for people to be a part of. And then as people feel you know comfortable or 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 whatever they can actually grassroots having people over to their house so if the ban is for 10 people you know two families could get together or three families or 10 singles could could feel comfortable enough to get together and do the digital meetup together um, and sort of all log in together and watch it but we're not necessarily gonna uh, be promoting that as like a church sponsored hey all the youth go here or 10 youth go here and 10 youth go here we're just gonna promote the online digital experiences, and then people can kind of grassroots on their own if they want to meet together physically. Um, we had a couple of questions come in along the lines of how to do these, you know, these conversations well. Uh, and maybe this would even be, Jody, maybe you could even help me pipe in on this a little bit, uh, or, or, or PK. Uh, I think just some of the questions of what platforms are we planning to use you know, how do, how do we even do staff meeting? I mean, you, Pastor Kevin, you did an all staff meeting this morning across, you know, I think there were staff in three different locations, you know, in groups today. So, um, Jody, I don't know if you want to talk a little more technical, just about like what, like what practically we're using um, Zoom or, you know, whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, IT specialists, but uh, what I mentioned in the chat was that we're exploring all the options right now. Uh, a lot of it will depend on what the group looks like, what the size of it is, who the audience is, who the host is. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're promoting talk it out groups, that's really just kind of talking about the message from the weekend, we might feel comfortable with people hosting a Google Hangout or a Facebook uh, you know, watch party from, you know, their own group that they, that they have access to, like the gal did. Uh, Pastor Kevin mentioned did a watch party this past weekend with her Facebook, you know, private group and got 80 people to log into her 
her Facebook watch party. Um, so we're, we're kind of exploring all the different things for larger groups, like our women's groups. Um, we're considering doing a format like this, where maybe we have, you know, four or five people who are our featured panelists uh, that everybody can, can listen to or, or watch. And uh, maybe we have a curriculum that we show uh, via the digital, and then we have the opportunity for people to, to talk. Uh, and Zoom might have this um, ability to, to actually segregate into separate rooms, uh, you know, if you depending on what kind of account you have with Zoom. So uh, we're looking at Zoom, we're looking at Google Hangouts, we're looking at uh, Facebook, uh, we're looking at um, even doing IG Lives. Our youth talked about doing like an IG Live meetup party this week. For the, they were supposed to have their one big night where all of our locations uh, get together on the east side on one night and all of our locations on the west side get together physically. Obviously, that's not happening anymore. So they're currently talking about, well, what if we just did a, 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 an IG Live, like Instagram Live, everybody just logs on. You can show a couple different faces at the same time. So to be honest, we don't have all of it worked out. We're just, we're in the exploratory phase right now. Um, and what we're asking is who's the audience? How big the, is the audience? What do we want the interaction to look like? And who's hosting it? And what, what platforms are they familiar with? Do we need to do trainings with the host? Do we need to educate our own staff? I don't know how to run a Zoom meeting. I just know how to log on and turn my camera on. And so I need to be trained, right? So um, there, there's different levels and layers to this. Uh, so we're, we're in the exploratory phase. Those are the platforms that we're looking at. And those are the questions that we're sort of filtering through. Hey, Brandon, one of the yep. questions that uh, I was just shown had to do with sustainability. And I want to address that for a minute. Um, somebody said, hey, is this actually sustainable? This is kind of plan online and so forth over the long haul. And I want to just share my feeling uh, toward that is absolutely it is sustainable. And here's why uh, is because with everything else being cut off, um, we're talking about NBA games. If this stays on, the NFL games, I mean, they're, they're, people are not going to have things to do. And so the first one that gets to the, you know, the trigger, so to speak, the handle, the communication, if you can see this as a race, get up from this meeting and things you don't know, like I'm going to be the first one to it. I want to get there quickly. Uh, in terms of local competition and, and national competition for people's attention. Um, I just think we have a big chance of actually sustaining people, grabbing people and sustaining them because the day that all of that is back in, the day there are concerts again, parades again, um, the day that there, people are allowed to get together again in business setting, the day we're going to be allowed to be together again. So I think this is actually sustainable through all of this season where there is a ban on people being together, that if we can just explore like Jody was just sharing and, and implement as many opportunities as possible through the digital world and get these meetings going, people will be connecting and they will welcome that connection because there's not a, a, a lot of other things for them to be distracted by. Well, case in point, we organized this call in less than 24 hours. When have you ever got 150 pastors together in less than 24 hours? Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's, it shows people, people have interest in connecting right now. Uh, let me say one more thing on this. Um, I heard today I was forwarded an article that Google is offering the premium or elevated level of their uh, hangouts or online meeting uh, service for free just to help businesses and education and whatnot. So you may want to check that out. Um, we are using Zoom today. Zoom has three different capabilities that I'm aware of, uh, video calls, webinars, and breakout rooms. And we've used all three with Team Church and um, it works great. Honestly, it's worth the 15 bucks a month to pay for it, do it. It's nothing compared to being able to have up to a hundred calls. In fact, you all made us upgrade today because so many of you registered, we had to even upgrade beyond that. Um, it, it's just worth it right now. Uh, it, it's a small cost compared to what you could really use it for um, in the life of your church. Uh, Jody or Lindsay, do you guys have any other questions that we could be talking through? Well, I have one, I've gotten a couple of texts and I think somebody asked the question, I think we should maybe document 
um, and add a, a Zoom call for like a how to host an online um, meeting meeting because <laughs> I do think that Brandon you're excellent at setting it up and, and hosting it and we've got some people on our team that are really good at and have experience in doing that and I think we're gonna have a whole host of people that don't know how to do that so I think I just wanted to kind of publicly say I think that we should add that to our list of um, meetups that we do and then one of the questions that I saw um, I don't know if we have an answer for this, but the best way to process fresh starts and new people that are coming into the life of our church. I was kind of wanting to hear um, from you or PK what uh, some ideas on how are we processing, you know, if we're seeing new people coming in, what are we doing with that? So we are canceling our growth track. Uh, we're not going to do our growth track because of the component of growth track for us is to get people immediately integrated into a team by which they have an orientation, they visit, like if you're going children's ministry, they walk through the rooms, they meet the team. We just felt like all of the strength of, you know, and need for that is actually not current. So what we're doing is we're focusing more on I said earlier, we, we isolating our attendance and our guest by way of our database in every particular, uh, every uh, meetup that we have. So if it's the women's, if it's the men, if it's the youth, if it's the watch parties, if it's wherever it is, we are activating right now through our team. And again, you got people working for you that don't have other things to do. So think about Boy, this is an area it may seem really hard at first, but if you assign it to someone or to a group of people, we want to know who it is that is attending all of these so that we can identify not only our own people, but our guests. So, as I said earlier, in that, in, in this weekend, we had, I think we had about 45 salvations this weekend. Um, and then we also had people who were guests. And we had people who were actually saying, I would like to host a watch party. And some of them were out of our region, having to do with our, our own uh, church facilities or our physical locations. They were not near a physical location. So we're thinking, wow, we're going to have more watch parties going when all of this is over in areas where we don't actually have a physical location. So that's how we're going uh, about it is that we, I've assigned a team that is creating the ability for us to know who is in attendance at our digital gatherings. And there's various ways they're, they're telling me that they're going to gather that, but we're creating a whole new metrics. We're not, we don't have need for our normal metrics, so we're creating a whole new metrics um, that will identify and separate guests. And then we're going to come alongside and disciple people into and start up new watch parties. Um, PK, I feel like we should talk about Easter here for a minute. Um, before we do, I'm just going to mention this to anybody um, who would be interested. I've got some information over the last 24 hours from an organization we work with a lot called Yellow Box. And they are offering uh, some solutions for embedding um, live streaming into your website if that is not currently something you have set up as well as um, even some technical packages you might need and they are offering it all at cost they you know could have just kind of taken their any of their um, profit out of it in this season so if you want more information on them you can mention team church and talk to them on Instagram or through their website uh, but a couple couple generous options there. I mean, website set up as low as like a hundred bucks to get you going with online embedded streaming if you don't have it and that kind of thing and hosting and all of that. So for what that's worth, if that helps anybody, um, you can reach out to them and I'm sure they would um, be glad to work with you. Um, PK, talk to us about Easter. So a number of questions have come in just regarding um how are we approaching Easter? Are we still going to do Easter? Um, so maybe just unpack some of your initial thoughts on Easter and we can ask some follow-ups if needed. 
One of my friends said that he might have to risk being arrested versus shutting down Easter. An unnamed friend who's probably on here today was saying that. So anyway, um, just to lead with that and to tell you, we're going to have some decisions to make. And it sounds like that the band is going to definitely include Easter. And uh, I, again, I want to just refer back to, for me, that's going to be a hard one. So let me qualify that. That's going to be a hard one. I, I don't know. Maybe if we all lobby well, we could get permission on that sacred weekend that means so much to us um, to actually have gatherings. Who knows? There, there can be some things that per, perhaps could do that. I guess right now my mindset, though, is that I do really believe that what we're doing is going to be strong. I really believe if we do it well, and, and I, I'm working harder than I have worked, guys, um, at the pioneering aspect of our church. And I would suggest that everyone do that. Um, just get in here and let your creative juices flow. Gather with your team. Talk about some of these ways that we can connect people and connect groups and so my point is that I think we could tend to underestimate what's happening through all of this. I don't know. I, I just think I could probably have more people than ever before at Easter, <laughs> potentially. Um, and if I think if we think like that, it's better than thinking, oh, my goodness, if we can't meet, you know, and be in a physical location – and then we're actually going to, you know, we're going to fall apart slowly and surely here. I'm, I'm not really thinking that way, and I would encourage you not to. I would say let's work hard, and let's work at building these communication systems and connecting with our church. They need us more now than ever before, and the world needs the church more than ever before. Uh, it's just a matter of us creating a new way of communicating. Uh, PK, we also had a question come in, um, I thought was really great, about Easter and just the theme of Easter. You know, is it is it an overreaction to change up pre-planned, you know, themes on Easter? This person asked, you know, should, should our upcoming series change into something more surrounding, you know, the attributes of God, you know, our, our faith, our hope in Christ? So maybe just talk to us about theming Easter and and... I, mean, I don't know if you have any thoughts on it for us. Or, yeah, we're, or, we're changing ours. Um, we're definitely changing ours. I, I pretty much everything I had planned has changed. Last weekend's message, this weekend's Easter season series, it's all changed. And um, I'm, I'm better like that. I feel more comfortable by speaking to, you know, the season that we're in and what's on people's minds. So I think, I think series that are encouraging people, with faith and confidence, where we put our trust, um, those sort of things. There's a great song out right now. There's two great songs out by Elevation. One is called The Blessing, and the other one is called Graves into Gardens. <laughs> so, Graves into Gardens. So, you know, I just think, wow, that could be a great Easter thing. Uh, and so, think outside of the box would be my encouragement, and uh, I, I would try to meet the moment versus, of course, applying Easter to it, but meet, meet, meet the moment in terms of situations that people are in right now. Jody or Lindsay, I'm not sure if you guys have any more questions that have come in. Uh, we're at about an hour. We can keep going for a minute, I'm sure, but I um, feel like we've hit a lot of the topics. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for engaging like you are. This chat's been going crazy. We've never done this before. So thank you so much. Also, I want to remind you, we're going to be posting this conversation as well as potentially some of the others later in the week, depending on how they go, um, on our Open Network site. Team Church is now a partner with Open Network, and we have a page uh, dedicated to Team Church resources, and we will actually have a training video section for virus response uh, type things like this. We plan to do multiple of these over the next few uh, weeks as needed. So that will all be available on open. And, and I don't know how you all feel about this. If you're needing um, another meetup like this in a week or so, we may, we may call an audible and do this again. We're just going to kind of be here with it, with everybody and walk this through together. So 
Jody, Lindsay. Yeah, I would just say we're, you know, we want to resource, uh, we want to resource churches, we want to help pastors and teams, um, and whatever we can do to connect with you ourselves or, or get you connected to each other. That's really the heart of Team Church. Uh, it's not just about Champion Center. It's not just about Pastor Kevin or our team here. Uh, it really is about networking the local church. So uh, thanks for taking time to be here. And uh, like Brandon said, we're going to be uploading whatever we can to that open network page for, for churches, um, as well as doing the other meetups this week. So uh, several of you have said you want to be a part of that. Uh, any questions we didn't get to today, we'll try to fit it into upcoming uh, meetups and, and, and document them there. So thanks so much. Uh, Ryan is here helping me in this room, and, and uh, he was just pointing to the question as to whether or not my notes would be available. Uh, and Jody, you, maybe you could answer what we do currently. I, I know we've done it di differently um, over time, so having to do with my message notes. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've gone through sort of an evolution of, of making them available or not making them available in recent history, but... Um, you know, it's something that we can definitely upload to the same page on Open Network uh, and work with our partnership through that because that seems to be a great um, sort of neutral zone for everybody to find and go to. Uh, but we can, you know, once you have those notes done, if that would be helpful for people and you're comfortable with it, we could just uh, post them up there for people to see and, and yep. use. One more thing, Jody, uh, that you could address is the way we're approaching our website. Many of the listeners may have already visited that, but in case, just tell them about the coronavirus update page. Yeah, we're doing our best to stay up to date. Uh, I, I think we need, we're, it's about time for us to get another update up today. Our last one was on Saturday night at around nine o'clock. So, uh, but we have a, an ongoing updated uh, coronavirus page on our website that should be visible from the, you know, the homepage. We also have our watch parties front and center because uh, we want people to, you know, be able to find that easily. Once we get some of our ducks in line for these small group digital meetups, that will probably live on our website too. So a lot of stuff is just flexible um, for us right now and trying to make decisions in the moment, but not make too many decisions too far in advance, uh, just because we want to be able to stay flexible and, and moving. So we do have a, an updated uh, coronavirus page that we, uh, I should say, we're trying to keep updated, uh, ongoing, and just trying to keep our, our church family in the know. A lot of times fear comes with uncertainty uh, because they just, they feel like they don't know. Um, and they have so many questions through so many other areas of their life that as a church, if we can bring that hope, bring that faith, as well as bring wisdom um, and, and some really practical things that, you know, we're cooperating with the different things that our government suggesting, et cetera, uh, and just bringing hope. That's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to uh, combat fear with faith and not be combative about it. So, Hey, um, sisters, please take care of yourself. Um, you guys are all VIPs. You really, really matter to the people in your church and the community there and so if I could leave you with that thought that self-care is extremely important right now, not just for you, but for the people that look to you for leadership and for all of us who are alongside you on the same team with you. So in the morning when you get up, uh, have that me time, uh, get the blessing flowing, uh, get, get the music on, and uh, keep yourself strong because you really do matter to so many people right now. And we're going to get through this. We're going to get through together, and we're going to overcome in a big, big way. And we're going to all have our stories to tell of how God worked in us and with us and through us. So God bless you guys. Love you so much. Well, Pastor Kevin, why don't you say a quick blessing, speaking of, uh, to say a quick blessing over every, every church represented. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have to do what we do, and we speak blessing, declare your presence in all of our lives, in all of our churches, over our homes and our families. We thank you, God, that you are with us in this season, in this time. I pray health mentally, emotionally, spiritually over every pastor, his family, her family today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. Pray this has been helpful. Uh, we're going to keep inventing ways to communicate with you all, walk with you all through this time. Uh, reach out to us on any uh, means necessary, email, Instagram, all of it. We're watching it all. And I'm happy to stand with you and walk with you all through this. So God bless you guys. Have a great, great week. Um, love you. Build the church strong. <laughs>